This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi. My guest today is Val Blaha, and she is an artist, musician, singer, songwriter, <laughs> teacher, all of it. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It, it's, it's great for you to be here, and I can't wait to hear your story because I understand that you just recently did a, a new CD and sort of funded it through Kickstarter. I did. I did a Kickstarter campaign in May through June of last year. Wow. It was a, a big thing to do and a lot of a lot of took us about five months to prepare for the Kickstarter campaign, but we raised our goal of seventy five hundred dollars due to a lot of very generous friends and family. And uh, yeah, so we made the album in, in summer of last year. That is so incredible. <laughs> so to, to do to prepare for a Kickstarter campaign what do you, you need to make a video? Is that what you do? or? Well, that's one of the things. Uh, they require that you have a video that mm -hmm. where you have to talk about what your goals are. Basically, it's your mm -hmm. ask for, for the money to, to justify what you're asking for and explain it all. Um, and uh, yeah, so the video had some of my music in it. And, um, and then to prepare, we also, uh, my husband helped a lot with the planning of it. And we just went in and looked at a lot of other Kickstarter campaigns. It involves doing rewards for your backers. So we oh, looked at right. kind okay. of, you know, what are successful reward levels mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it, it involved a lot of reaching out to people during the month we were running it because you have 30 days uh, or we chose to do it in 30 days and it's all or nothing on, on Kickstarter, this particular okay. one. So if we didn't reach our goal, then we wouldn't Yee! get any. Yes. So. Yeah. So there, it was a stressful month, but at the end, we were very happy. So. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> so, and, and I mean, what made you think of doing it? Just said, you know what, that's a really great idea. I think we can do that. Well, you know, I knew that I w I'm trying to take my music kind of to the next level, mm -hmm. and I knew that involved a studio in Portland and hiring really great musicians. So, and I knew that I didn't have all the funds to do that up mm -hmm. front. Um, and I'd read, uh, I'd read a lot about Kickstarters and I'd supported several others for other I have musicians. Too. So, yeah. yeah, so we just thought, well, we'll, we'll try it and yeah, see what happens. So, okay. Yeah. So you're, you write all the songs yourself. I do. A couple of the songs, actually, my husband helped co-write. Oh, really? And my friend Jory McGinnis, who's a fantastic songwriter, uh, helped co-write one of the songs, but mm -hmm. they're all my, mine, basically. So, yes. <laughs> and, and how did you get involved in the music business? Well, I started playing piano when I was six years old. Okay. Um, I sang from when I was tiny, and mm -hmm. my parents noticed at six that I would always go over to pianos and try to play. So they found wow. a teacher who was willing to work with a six-year-old, and that was sort of what I did as a child. I uh, just did a lot of big performances all over. I lived in L.A. Um, so oh, that's... It was a good place for yeah, it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I, from like local community events, I accompanied choirs. Um, it was what I did from like age six to seventeen, I guess. Wow. So and then I s took a little time off from music and got more into art. But then my second year in college at Santa Barbara UCSB, I met a fantastic piano accompaniment professor and ended up turning into the music major for about three years. Isn't it funny so. how those things happen? It's sort of serendipitous. You know, yes. like you're thinking, I might go in another direction. Then you meet this person, and all of a sudden you think, no, I really love that. Yeah, he was he was a fantastic teacher. And, and I really love collaboration mm -hmm. in music. I mean, I did a lot of solo piano, but my favorite thing really is to play with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and so at school there, I accompanied the opera singers. So that was really oh, fun. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, yeah, so, and I loved that. So that was, I mean, I loved that kind of music too, mm -hmm. although it's not what I particularly prefer to play these days but um, yeah and then I went off and did a bunch of other stuff along the way I ended up actually getting my degrees in anthropology um, and doing a master's in anthropology and I got really interested in agriculture which sort of led my husband and I to start a small farm up here in Oregon mm -hmm. um, and then I guess in 2001 I had been a volunteer coordinator for a nonprofit in Portland and just kind of realized I didn't like having to drive into the city every day um, so I decided to start teaching piano, and I was, I'd always thought I could do that, and it was just the right time to make a switch. So that's been my, my day job for And you And you years. teach privately, not in a school. That's right. I've been teaching at a music store in Hillsboro and mm -hmm. my own music for several years, since 2002. And I've been teaching here locally in McMinnville uh, since, I think, 2009. 
I've moved around, but I have my own space on Third Street now. So do you take so. um, players at every level, like mm -hmm. the very beginners as well as people that are more accomplished? I do, yeah. I tend to, I do all levels of piano, mm -hmm. and then I do beginning guitar and mandolin. Oh. Um, yeah, and so, and I have a lot of, I teach kids, I teach adults. Mm -hmm. um, I really love working with adults, especially. I love my kids, because they're just, it's amazing to see them glow. Blossom. Mm -hmm. I have one little girl who just works at it so hard, and it's so amazing oh, to see fun. the confidence and that mm -hmm. she gets. But adults are especially fun because they really, really want to be there. Nobody's forcing them ever. Right. So, and a lot, a lot of times, it's that dream deferred sort of thing mm -hmm. that I always wanted to do that, but but yeah. all the reasons why they didn't when they were younger, then all of a sudden, it's it's why not? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's very rewarding as a teacher. Mm -hmm. So. And you, you perform locally, too? I do. Um, I've been, lately I've been doing a lot around Yamhill County. I perform at the Horseradish in Carleton. Mm -hmm. um, there's a barn guest in called The One Horse. <laughs> I played for about a year and a half. I had a regular Saturday gig at a pizza store in Hillsborough called Earth Oven Pizza. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a really great way for me to kind of cut my teeth on performing often. And then you learn, you know, what works depending on if there's one person there or 20 people or... Um, so that was a great, a great thing for me to do for about a year and a half. So when you're doing that, is it typically a keyboard that you're playing? No, actually, normally when I'm performing, I play country folk music, mm -hmm. and I usually sing and play guitar. Okay. Um, I like the guitar as a soloist largely because it's portable. <laughs> I have a keyboard, but it's just harder to take sure, around it's places. Heavy, yeah. And I like the rhythm um, that you can get on a guitar. Mm -hmm. um, so that tends to be what I. But I do, although I have a, one of my side bands, I, sp I play keyboard in that. So. Oh, so you, you, you do play with other musicians do, fairly yeah. regularly? Uh, yeah, I have a few. I was in a cover band called Top Hands with a mm -hmm. couple of local guys who are really great. Um, and then I have a group that I'm in sporadically called Big Love. Um, everyone's a musician. It's all four of us women, I guess, in there. And mm -hmm. uh, So everyone's involved in a lot of projects, so we don't play a lot. I think that's really fun. People just kind of come together and sort of flow in and out of each other's lives and musical gigs and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. so when you decided that you were going to put together the second album, yes, and then you went out to sort of deliberately recruit your favorite people or the people you thought would interpret your music. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have a, I've been working with a performance coach in Portland. Mm -hmm. Her name's Vicki Ambinder for several years. And she's been amazing. I would, at the beginning, I would just take her cover songs I was playing and mm -hmm. we would work on, you know, interpretation. What's the feel of it? What are you trying to get across? Um, and then over the years, I've brought more and more originals and she was kind of one of the ones who just said, okay, you should, you have enough material, why don't we record another album? Because I recorded a solo one in 2012 that was just me doing mm -hmm. all the instruments. So she actually kind of helped me pull some of the people together. She suggested a gentleman named Tim Ellis, who's played with Aaron Meyer, mm -hmm. um, and he is just an incredible guitar player. Oh, that's so amazing. I'm, yeah. How fun. <laughs> it was great, and she suggested him for laying down all the guitar tracks because basically it makes it kind of go a lot faster if you have someone who you know the rhythm is right on and he came in hardly having heard the songs at all and he just he laid everything down and it was fantastic so um, and then uh, my friend Tim Connell who plays mandolin in Rio Con Brio and Stumptown Swing I knew that he's one of my favorite mandolin players in mm -hmm. the world so I invited him and he said yes um, we have a steel a pedal steel player named uh, Paul Brainerd who was kind of a last minute addition and he was fantastic oh, fun. Um, Tony Furtado is a banjo and slide guitar player on there who's worked with Alison Krauss and people like that um, yeah and some of my other local friends my drummer is a woman named Teresa Riccardi and my bass player is local so great <laughs> so I see that uh, Paul has popped up the image of your oh yeah of your CD cover uh -huh. which is really cool thank you and the, that's you. That it? Yes, in, and that's in the, in the sunset glow. Uh huh. <laughs> Another a local photographer took that picture. That's actually. great. Yeah. Great I mean, isn't it wonderful how much how much how many talented people there are? Mm -hmm. You don't have to go very far to find people that are just brimming with with talent and I mean, there's so much musical choice that we have in this area. I think it's great. It's true. It's true. Yes. 
So it, it feels very lucky. And it was fun to kind of draw in people that I knew for various aspects. So yeah. That was really cool. I like to help you with different things. And mm -hmm. so, the, so a production coach, that's what yes. she does for musicians in particular. Yes, performance coach. A performance coach. Mm -hmm. So she'll, you know, say, look at how you're singing and say, you know, well, maybe you should stand instead of sit or, or you know, what's, what do you really, what's the song really about? What are you trying to get across and how do you get that across mm -hmm. in the most effective way? Um, kind of like an acting coach. I've never even heard of that, though, but I think it's, it's really fascinating, actually. Yeah, I, I, I call it like therapy for musicians mm -hmm. in a way, because I, I come out of every session and just totally reinvigorated and excited for whatever songs. So is she a musician herself? Mm -hmm. Oh, how interesting. Yeah, she's actually an old friend of mine from when uh, I lived in Portland in the 90s, mm -hmm. and we had hooked up again, ran into each other in, I guess, around maybe 2000. Not 2010 or so. Okay. So, yeah. And that's wonderful. And I mean, what an interesting thing. She probably started out just kind of doing, oh, you should do this. Oh, you should do that. <laughs> and then it just kind of moved into something more professional. Yeah. And I know she, that's her, I think her, her background is in acting and music both. Okay. So she did study all of that. So, yeah, she's, she's incredible. So. so it feels like <laughs> it's all kind of coming together for you right now. Everything is, at, I mean, the right place, the right time, the right people opportunities that's what I'm hoping mm -hmm. I've been I, since January the album was released um, on January 5th so it's on Amazon and iTunes okay good um, and on my website valblaha.com mm -hmm. and um, so since the beginning of January I've been working on booking for the year booking gigs yay so I'll be playing locally on the 20th of February at Willamette Valley Vineyards okay um, and in Newburgh on the 6th as part of the Newburgh Art and Wine Walk mm-hmm uh -huh. Um, so yeah, so I've been doing that and then sending it to radio stations starting in the Northwest and then going to be working on nationally. Um, it's kind of a new world, you know, if you don't have a label, you have to get creative and send it yourself and mm -hmm. so I've been doing a lot of that. So you just send it to radio stations in different places and, mm -hmm. and, and take a listen? Yeah, and there's, there's sites kind of geared towards musicians where there's opportunities you, you can subscribe to mm -hmm. um, or, you know, they say, to enter your song onto this radio station, you know, sign up here, and then you can, that's worked before, and then you get just more exposure. Okay. So. And we were talking about the fact that you had started maybe doing some video, video recordings of you singing. Yeah. To put on your own website. Yeah, there's a, I have a, I have a YouTube page that I just started. Cool. Um, and I have a song I wrote called Pink, which is sort of a girl's empowerment song. Mm -hmm. So I have video on my YouTube page. <laughs> Of that song. Oh, how fun. Okay. <laughs> Why be a princess when you can be a queen is the I like chorus it. line. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm just kind of venturing into that. I've been a little bit more about sound than, than visual, so mm -hmm. I'm trying to do both now. Yeah, so you have to get all the flashy bells and whistles. Exactly. Huh? That's going to be fun, though. And it's, I think, you know, with music, it's, it's hard to say, hey, I'm great. Hey, you know, it's kind of country. It's kind of folk. It's, here it is. Here's here's what I sound like. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You have to put it out there and mm -hmm. see what people think. And I tend to have a pretty broad audience. You know, I have one of my local um, friends who got the album. She wrote to me and she said she loved the album and that her mom heard it and she loved it. So oh, she good. was going to buy one for her. And so it makes me kind of happy to think that my music is reaching. You know, from age thirty to eighty something. Um, so you know, I kind of like yeah. That. Jimmy Buffett has this saying. You know, you get the nerve up to perform and then you're going to do some shows and he says and so you know your first couple of shows it's your mom and her six friends mm -hmm. and they'll come to two and then you're on your own <laughs> it's true i think so yeah well i'm really glad that you came by today you want to hold the t-shirt up oh sure this yeah is the reward for your kickstarter supporters uh yeah this is one of the rewards and it's a tree that i drew and it says community supported music um, so, which was kind of the theme. I have a farm and we, I'm into community supported agriculture. So I kind of viewed it the same way since it's sort of, you know, people, we were asking people to support the product before the product was even available. Sure. Um, yeah. So in Water, Ashes and Wood is the, is the title of the album. So. Well, thanks very much, Val, for being here today yeah. and I wish you a lot of success. Thank you for having me. Thank I appreciate you. it.